Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we will be reading a special edition which is very rare and you, uh, many of you don't have it. It is called... Dun dun dun! The Lake Monster. I'm gonna read half of the book today or off. Okay, let's get started. The Lake Monster. Turn on your TV right away! It was a warm spring morning. I was feeding my dear little fishy, Habinacle, when... Oh, pardon me! I almost forgot to introduce myself. My name is Stilton, Geromino Skilton. I run the Roden Gazette, the most famous newspaper on Mouse Island. Wow. Look, you can see his feeding. This is Tia, and this is Geronimo's um, grandfather. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. I was feeding Hannibal when the phone rang. I was so startled, I accidentally dumped too much food into his tank. Geromino, it's Tia. Turn on your TV right away. I'll call you back in a minute. It was my sister Tia. What could possibly be so urgent? I just, I had just hung up when the phone when it rang again, as soon as I answered, I heard a shout so loud it made me knock half the fish food onto the floor. Grandson, it's me! Turn on your tea turn on your TV immediately <laughs> Go on now move those paws. I'll call you back in a minute. It was my grandfather William Shortpants, founder of the Rodent Gazette. What could possibly be so urgent? <laughs> I was heading toward my TV when the phone rang again. I was so surprised I jumped into the air and a good bit of fish food fell <laughs> into my open snout. <laughs> Are you watching the TV? I responded, spitting out the fish food. What? She said. Turn on your TV right away. I'll call you back in a minute. It was Panutia Pretty Paws. She's the most fantastic mouse I know. She's a TV journalist who has dedicated her life to defending the environment. But what could be possibly so urgent? I had just picked up the remote control when the doorbell rang. I tripped on the carpet and the rest of the flying food went flying everywhere. Hannibal. Ring, ring. Oops. Grandson. <coughs> ring, ring. Ack. Oof. Breaking news! I opened my front door and was immediately run over to two tiny cyclones. Hurry, Uncle Geromino, turn on your TV! They exclaimed. It took me a moment to recover from my surprise. By then, my adorable nephew, Jem Benjamin, and his friend, Boogie Wusi, Panutia Pretty Paws' knees were curled up on my couch. Hello, my little cheese nibbles, I said affectionately. Would one of you mind telling me what... <laughs> hissed Bussy Woosie. I turned my attention to the TV stream. A newscaster was interviewing <coughs> Sally Ratmelson, my number one enemy. When did you see that monster for the first time? The newscaster asked. As I said, a friend of mine who lives on the lake saw it yesterday. And he called. Come on, uncle, hurry up! Me at once to tell me about it. Could
Could you tell us what it looks like? The newscaster asked. Listen, if you want to know that, I suggest you buy the special edition of my newspaper, <coughs> the Daily Rat, right now, at once, immediately. Do you have photos of it? Of course. There's a huge picture of the lake monster on the front page. Oh, for the love of cheese! Had I heard it correctly? A lake monster and the Daily Rat, our rival newspaper, was coming out with a special edition about it. I had a feeling, feeling I'd been her- hearing from Grandfather William about this. There's no moment to lose. A split second later, the telephone began to ring. As I'd suspected, the first one to call me back was Dr- Grandfather William. He was shouting even more loudly than before. Hello, grandson. <coughs> Did you hear? We need to leave for the lake right away. Move it. There's no moment to lose. I hate to travel. But grandfather, you know I hate to travel. <coughs> It was too late to protest. He'd already hung out. Hum, hung up. Next, Tia called me back. Jerry Barry, did you hear the news? We need to leave right away. There's not a moment to lose. I'll be right over. But Tia, you know I hate to travel. But it was too late to, to protest. She'd already hung up. Pranu Tia, pretty pause was the last to call. Hi G, did you hear? We can't miss our chance like this. It could be a rare animal we thought was extinct. We need to leave right away. There's no moment <laughs> to lose. I'll be right over. This time, I didn't even try to protest. I hate to travel, but I would do anything for Panutia. I was lost in a daydream about a romantic canoe ride with Panutia when I felt someone tugging my jacket. It was Benjamin and Bugsy. Bugsy. Dr- Uncle Geronimo, can we come too? Asked Benjamin. I don't know, Benjamin. I said it could be dangerous. Come on, Uncle G. Bussy pleaded. Pleaded. Nothing bad would happen as long as you're there to protect us. Their furry little faces were so hopeful. I just couldn't let them down. So I hugged Benjamin and Bugsy and said. Oh, all right. We'll go find the lake monster together. Okay. Leaving for the lake, we decided it would be the best to travel together in Panutia's car. Since I am a true gentle mouse, I let Sia sit in the front seat while I climbed and back with Bugsy, Benjamin, and all our baggage. Are you comfy, Geronimo? Asked Panutia, looking in her rearview mirror. <coughs> I responded. My snout was full of scientific cat fur on Tia's suitcase. Panutia gave me a funny smile. You know, G, you're squeaking very strangely today. That's because my brother is a very strange mouse. Tia declared, "Don't tell me you've never noticed." Panutia and Tia took turns driving. They spent the whole ride chatting, while Benjamin and Bugsy passed the, the time playing rat paper scissors. Panutia stopped three times to let us stretch our paws. For me, that turned out three times too many. At the first stop, I had to unload. And reload all the luggage to get Panutia's notebook from the very bottom bag. Ek! At the second stop, I had to change a flat tire all by myself while Panutia and Tia would just do their yammering away. Ugh! At the third stop, everything went smoothly until we tried to leave. That is. We ran out of gas, and I had to push the car the rest of the way. 
But for Panutia, I would have climbed Cheddar Crag with one paw tied behind my tail. And without complaining either. At the lake, there was a nasty surprise waiting for us. Every television station at the, and newspaper on Mouse Island had sent reporters and photographers. Plus, many curious rodents were visiting. There were mice about talking about the lake monster. We made our way to the only hotel in the area, the Golden Catfish, where rooms were going to, like hot cheese buns. Fortunately, Tia had referred, reserved five seats ahead of time. Okay, if you... I'm going to pause for a while. I'm not going to read anything because I'm going to catch my breath. If you want to read it, you can just look at it right now. Yeah, and the next video will be making a fox. The hotel's manager, followed by two rodents who are as thin as string cheese, came to meet us. Good evening. <laughs> my name is Samuel Sweetwater. And I am the manager of the Golden Catfish. Welcome. Did you have a nice trip? Yes, it was fab mouth, my friends responded. I couldn't even squeak a word since I was still trying to catch my breath after pushing the car. Is this gentle mouse with you? Sweet water asked, pointing to me. Yes, of course. <sighs> I responded, my name is <laughs> Stilton, Geromino Skilton. Geromino <laughs> Skilton, the famous writer, it is a real honor to have you here with us, he said, shaking my paw vigorously. This place really needs a bit of publicity. <laughs> I was very lucky to be down the lake last week when the monster last week i exclaimed but on the news they said that the monster was first seen yesterday sweet water stammered um yes that is i mean i meant to say last night and you were the one you, you were the one to contact Miss Ratmousen, I asked, finally to able to free myself from paw shake. Yes, he replied. Sally, I mean Miss Ratmousen, is an old acquaintance of mine. When she heard the news, she wanted to buy the exclusive rights to the story. She pays very well, you know. My newspaper pays very well, too, I said. Of course, he he he. Sweetwater sneered. But you see, Mr. Skilton, I know Sally, I mean Miss Ratmanson, for so many years that I immediately thought of her. He was still squeaking when my cell phone rang. It was Grandfather William Tendered. Grandson, are you at the lake yet? Move that tail! Yes, Grandfather, I... It's about time! I've sent up a photographer. He's there waiting for you. So move that pause! But Grandfather, I... No thanks necessary, Grandfa... Grandson. You can show your gratitude by getting busy out there. I want pictures of this monster by tomorrow night! So move it! Grandfather, can you listen for a... But he already hung up. Rats, if you follow me, I'll show you to your rooms. He he he. Samuel Sweetwater said. He turned to tin to two tin rodents. Zip zap. Take these bags inside. Clue number one. What did Samuel Sweetwater say about the monster that seemed to be a bit of strange? Okay, there is this page. I will uh, go back to that page later before I show you the answers at the back. An attic for a king. 
We, as we headed to our rooms, Mr. Sweetwater turned to squeak with us. Unfortunately, I have one four-room rodent left. For the fifth, I taught a simple but comfortable solution. Like the gentle mouse I am, I accepted the simple but comfortable solution. Follow me to the attic, Mr. Skilton. The attic? I asked, lugging my bag up the stairs. Why, oh why, I hadn't stayed at home. The bathroom was on the first floor, only ten flights of stairs down. For an athletic rodent like yourself, I'm sure it wouldn't be nothing, heh. <laughs> Naturally, the hot water will cost you just a little bit extra. Why, oh why, I hadn't stayed at home. Is the bed soft? I asked. The mattress is natural straw. Just be careful of the holes in the roof. Some bats might come in. Bats? Oh, why, oh, why I hadn't stayed at home? Bats. Samuel Sweetwater drew open the door to the attic. You and your roommate will just do fine here. As I stepped, a powerful flash blinded me. My name is Stevie Snapson, and I never botched my shot, my new roommate declared. This had to be the photographer that drum that Grandfather William had sent. Flash, 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 flash. Ugh. As you see, he's, he's not really blinded because he's covering his... Eyes. Sally's photographer. When I went down for dinner, more unpleasant surprises awaited me. Sally Redmousen was seated at the table next to ours. As soon as she saw me, she attacked. Stilton, what in the name of Cheddar are you doing here? I'm here to photograph the lake monster, Sally, I responded. You're a little late, old friend. This time, I've got the scoop. Look! She shoved a photo of the monster under my snout. It was hard to see it too clearly because of the fog. But it really was quite striking. Let me introduce to the author of this masterpiece. Sally declared, this is Ricky Zoomson, my best photographer. A scrawny rodent poked out from behind her. She shot me a smirk. Trying to remain calm, I responded. Well, Sally, you've made the first move, but our next photo will be ours, so you can bet on it. I don't think so. Anyway, the, the monster won't show his snout until tomorrow at dawn, Sally replied. But how do you know that? I demanded. But she already stomped away. The situation was getting stranger by the second. I sat down on our table. But I couldn't take my eyes off that photo of the monster. The more I looked at it, the more convinced that something wasn't right. As soon as Panutia saw the photo, she exclaimed, What an unusual looking monster. There's definitely something fishy about it. That worried me. Do you think it could be dangerous? Don't go all Freddy Mouse on me, exclaimed Tia. We need to think about the monster tomorrow. Let's get some shut eye. Clue number two. Before, Before Sally left, left what, what did, did she say that was strange? strange? A bathroom! Quick! It wasn't very peaceful night for me, dear reader. Stevie Snapshot snored louder than my Uncle Nibbles when he has a cold. Plus, anytime I managed to nod off for more than a few minutes, I dreamed of the monster. Suddenly, I had a very urgent need to go to the bathroom! I raced down ten flights off the stairs but I tripped over the last step. I raced down 
The ten flights of stairs that separated me from the first floor. But in front of the hotel entrance, just when I was about to no way I was going to make it, I saw a yellow arrow pointing to the bathroom. I scurried as quickly as I could. That's why I heard some squeaking from the next room. Why do we need to wear oxygen? And landed on my tail front of the hotel entrance. Mask, said a voice. Because this time, the monster will stay underwater. Only the head will appear. We can't let anyone see the broken tail. Let's go. Boss said not to be late. I snuck out to see who was talking. But I must have missed then. Who were they? How did they know so much about the monster? And who was their boss? The door was open. I peeked inside the room. I spotted wet suit, flippers, mask, and under underwater gear. Things were getting stranger and stranger. An annoy mouse note. I raced up to the attic and tried to wake Stevie. No luck. Now his snoring was louder than a marching band. <laughs> I sighed. I was tired too. I tried putting my pillow over my head, but I could still hear him. I turned this way and that, curling my tail around my ears and tried to block out the sound. But I just couldn't sleep. I was lying there with my eyes wide open when I noticed something. <gasps> Someone had slipped an envelope under the door. But who? My whiskers were shivering with some suspense. I quickly opened the envelope and scanned the note inside. If you believe the monster who lives in the lake, come down to the shore before dawn breaks. In front of the castle ruins, you will get to see the monster in all of this beauty, signed a friend of yours. Someone smelled fishier than day old tuna. This annoying mouse note told me there are so many details about the monster appearing. Why does Geromino think there's something suspicious about that note? I'm gonna pause this for a while because the answer should be right here. About five seconds. Wait, I'm still thinking of the answer. What do you... <laughs> hey, no, no, no! Oh, fine, you can. A bumpy ride. Suddenly, Stevie woke up. Instantly, he was clicking his flash button. Where's the monster? Take me to him. I showed him the note. We decided we couldn't miss this chance to see the monster ourselves. Outside, it was really foggy. We ran into Mr. Sweetwater in front of the hotel. Can I give you a paw, Mr. Stilton? He asked. Yeah. But we need to get to the other side of the lake. But our car is out of gas, I explained to him. Can't you, can you drive a motorcycle? I can, uh, said Stevie. The hotel manager smirked. Don't worry, Mr. Skilton. It will only cost you a little bit extra. <laughs> a few minutes later, I was buckled into the sidecar. An ancient motorcycle. As it zoomed over the bumpy dirt road that circled the lake. Stevie was in the driver's seat. When we arrived at the other side of the lake, in front of the castle ruins, Stevie, tr Stevie tried to break but ended up crashing into an oak tree. What a catastrophe! The motorcycle was totaled. But we were okay, thank goodness. And we'd made it. We And we were the only ones there. Now we just had, had to hope that... The mysterious note told the truth, but sudden, suddenly, the lake water began to bubble. We could see something dark moving under the surface. A monster's tail. I mean the monster's tail. A long, thin tail suddenly burst through the water's surface. Hurry, Stevie! I yelled. Shoot! Shoot! At that moment, a dozzles. A dozen of other flashes went off. 
a herd of uh, photographers popped out of the brush. Choo, 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 choo. You got to Everyone raced for the lake as they had a pack of hungry clats on their tails. Sally photographer Ricky Zoomson pushed me so hard that I ended up in the water. The monster switching tail missed me by the whisker. I trashed and splashed on my way back to shore, but by then the monster had disappeared under the waves once more. The offer of the mysterious note had tricked me. It had given everyone the same information. There went my exclusive! Ricky Zoomson. <laughs> Does you know why Ricky Zoomson did that? We returned to the hotel on Paw. Mr. Sweetwater greeted us with his usual sm smarmy smiles. Mr. Stilton, how you do that motorcycle? He he he. I turned pinker than a naked mole rat. Well, you see, that is, we got a bit of a wreck. Oh, don't worry about it, said Mr. Sweetwater. Drood. We'll get fixed it in a blink of a cat's eye. It'll just cost you a little bit extra. He he he. We went up to our room. While Stevie developed the rules of the fl of flim, I collapsed on my straw mattress and tried to get some sleep. An hour later, we headed downstairs for breakfast. Tea was there with Benjamin and Bugsy, who hugged me. Benjamin, I mean Panutia, bounced over to me as well. This place is a marvelous natural of osis. We absolutely must pre prevent Uncle G, Uncle Geronimo, anyone from running it. Especially now the news told about the lake monsters everywhere. Did you get the photo of the monster? Benjamin asked. I've shown him the photo. Yes, well, sort of. You can see the monster in this one, exclaimed Bugsy Wugsy, or that least of part of him. Steve and I took a closer look. See, I never botched this, my shot. Ex he exclaimed trumpetantly. I gazed and gazed at the photo. Something about the monster's tail seemed odd. But what? Clue four. What looks odd about the monster's tail? Okay, I'm going to pause for a while. I'm not going to answer. The next day, every newspaper on Mouse Island had a huge headline about the lake monster on its front page. And they all printed better photos than ours when our cell phone rang. I knew right away who it would be. Grandfather William. What is this rubbish we published, grandson? He screeched. You better not be cramping Stevie's style. No, grandfather. It's just that. No ex excuses. Tomorrow we want photo that's good enough to fill the entire front page. Do you hear me? Move it. Get, those, get the picture. Go. I ran into Sally Rotmelson. And she waved the second special edition of the Daily Rats under my snout. Watch and learn, Stilton, watch and learn. At the Daily Rats, we don't settle a messy picture of the mo on monster's tail. It's all or nothing, I say. This is a rat race, after all. When I look at Sally's newspaper, I felt... My heart sank all the way to my paws. Suddenly, Benjamin exclaimed, But this photo couldn't have been taken by Ricky Zoomson. Look where the castle ruins are. We looked more closely at Sally's newspaper. Benjamin was right. This whole story was starting to stink worse than rotten Gouda. It was time to uncover the truth. Clue 5. Why couldn't Ricky Zoomson have taken the photo with the other photographers? The second annoy mouse note. 
That night was even worse than one before. Siba was snoring loud enough to wake a cat, Mato's cat. I just couldn't sleep. All at once, I had a brilliant idea. I could figure out who heard in the bathroom, near the bathroom. I went down the f to the first floor. As soon as I entered the bathroom, I heard squeaking from the next door. What do you mean? We need to get back underwater? Well, the tail wasn't supposed to be visible yesterday. It's all because of that clunky rodent who fell into the lake. This time, the monster's head will rise out of the water. They were the same voices as before. And they went squeaking about me. I peered through the keyhole and saw two rodents dressed in scuba gear. Strange, very strange. I was sure I had seen those two before, but I couldn't remember where. I crept into out of the bathroom to follow them, but they already had disappeared. Discouraged, I climbed back to the attic. That's when I saw another envelope by the door. If you want to beat your rival, make sunrise at time at your arrival. Take heart and come down to the swamp if you want to see the monster. Rump, signed a friend of yours. Mouse, see back, ride on the monster. Just before the sun up, Stevie and I ran again, stood at the entrance at, to the golden catfish. Samuel Sweetwater was also there and asked me his usual question. Can I give you a paw with hey. anything, Mr. Stilton? <laughs> Can I tell you how to reach the swamp? I asked timidly. Mr. Sweetwater smirked as he replied. Oh, it's easy. Just follow that path for you might get there quicker. It costs you... I know, I know, I said rolling my eyes. Just a little bit extra. After Steve and I had peeled for about t five minutes, the bike began to sink into the mud. We had continued through the, the muck by paw. Bletch. The fog was so thick we could hardly see our paws. Then suddenly, the monster's back emerged from the water. Quick, Stevie, shoot! I shouted. Where, where, where? He cried, taking pictures at random. Over there, on the lake! Once again, the other photographers poked their snouts off the shrubs and lead it straight for the monster. And Ricky Zomson pushed me into the water again. I was flailing, flailing around when suddenly... <gasps> the monster up from the depth, I, I found myself on its back. Stevie, take the picture! I screeched. I was scared out of my fur. The last thing I saw was the flash room of his camera. At that moment, the monster flung me towards show. Ah! Sure. Ah! What happened? When I woke up, I was back at the hotel. How are you feeling, Uncle Jeromino? Benjamin asked. All right, I mumbled, opening my eyes. What happened? You rode on the lake, monster, Benjamin said. Look, he showed me the front page of the rodents gazette with my picture front and center. You see, Stevie said proudly, I told you, I never watched my shot. You are very courageous, G, said Panutia, making me blush. That was such a fantastic thing, Mouse. My cell phone rang. As soon as I answered it, I heard Grandfather William's voice walking. Grandson, what a photo! Have you seen it? Snapshot is worth his weight in cheese. I want more photos just like that. But clear. Do you hear me? Move it. Snap those pics. Take a look. See? Well, Grandfather was happy. So at last I could relax. Thank good mouse. My relief didn't last long since Sally Rats Mouse soon burst into the room. Stilton, congratulations. You took a really nice photo. Thank you, Sally, I responded with satisfaction. As you can see, my newspaper is just as good as yours. Oh, of course, she replied, but my photograph is even better than yours. 
Didn't I tell you I am always right? Take a look, see. She shoved up close the photo of the monster's face under my snout. That monster is mine, and I won't let you have him. And with that, slamming the door behind her. Another sleepless night. Stevie snored again that night. He was loud enough to wake a dead rat. As usual, I was wasn't able to sleep a wink. My mind was racing like a hamster on a wheel. I thought about the story of the monster, our attempts to photograph him, Sally Scoop, Mister Sweetwater's strange behavior, and those two suspicious robe dents in next to the bathroom. I was so confused, but I. Knew I needed to find those two rodents. I got out of bed, crept down the stairs, and I headed to the bathroom. It was then my luck changed. From the room next door, I could hear squeaks. But Dad knew well. I by now. But Sally, that's too dangerous. I don't care. Sally replied. Are you telling me that that simpleton Stilton can climb on that monster and I can't? I want to be in a picture sitting a. Us tried at the monster right now at once. Okay, Sally, we'll meet at the center of the lake at midnight on the dot," said Mister Sweetwater. "You two, go get ready. You better not be late, not even by a minute, or else. Now get out, you cheeseheads!" I saw Sally and Samuel Sweetwater leave the room. I followed. By those two scuba divers. At last, I figured who they were. I ran to wake up Tia, Penutia, and Benjamin, Bussy, Bugsy, Wugsy, and Stevie. It was our turn to join the action. Clue six. Do you recognize those two scuba divers? An hour later, Stevie and I were in a life raft, smack dab in the middle of the lake. Waiting for the monster to appear. It was a moonless night. My tail was trembling with fright. After a few minutes of silence, we heard the trim of the motorboat approaching at top speed. The lights were off, so the rodents on board couldn't see us. We could hear their voices. Hurry up! I don't want to catch the cold out here. You. Your chilly lake. Say, come, Sally. Zip and Zap would be here any moment. Heh <laughs> heh heh. That better be Sna Sally snapped. Now, Ricky, try to get that shot this time. I'm tired of having your retouch on your adorable photos. Suddenly, we heard a rumbling in the distance. The monster was approaching from the bottom of the lake. Get ready to shoot, Stevie. But only when I say so. I whispered. Snapshot never botches his shot. He declared, standing up with his camera. At that moment, away from the monster, made the raft rock, and、uh, Stevie went shut down into the water. He hit me with the flash button with his way, and surfed off the lake, lit up. Naturally, Sally noticed us. Stilton, she yelled. Don't you? Want to know when to when to throw in the cheesecloth? I didn't answer. I was too busy trying to fish Stevie out of the lake. Meanwhile, the monster was getting closer. Just when it seemed we were about to end up his food, a helicopter appeared above us. It was Tia and Penutia at last. I managed to pull Stevie back and onto the raft. By now the monster was practically on top of us. That was when a rope ladder fell out of the helicopter into my paws. Steve and I grabbed it. We escaped the monster by a whisker. The belly of in, the beast. Incredibly, the the Stevie had managed to photograph her, the monster underwater. See, Snapshot never botches his shot. Never, he boasted. The next day the photo was. On the front page of the Rodent Gazette, in the article that accompanied it, I explained that what some drill Samuel Sweetwater had done. The monster was a fake. Samuel Sweetwater had cooked up this monstrous scam to get more tourists to come 
to the lake. He hoped to expand his hotel and make a small fortune. And Sally, well, with that exclusive to her, the story, her newspaper would have been sold to millions of copies. But instead, it was there's the Rodent Gazette that set a new sales record. Samuel and Sally had go to court to face front charges. The judge made them pay a huge fine. Thanks to a suggestion from Penutia, the money was used to help build a ma magnificent natural park at the lake. It became a wildlife preserve where rodents can play, hike, and go back riding. Bike riding without danger. And can you guess what the park's main attraction? Riding around the lake on the mo monster's back. And guess who was pedaling to the power the monster samuel sweetwater zip and zap and the next page this is the end and if you want to see the answers pause and that will be our end of the video and so yeah thanks for reading guys and i and i hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe and put a thumbs up